I am going to start with the most generic thing in SQL, which is creating tables. So we are going to have a table which is called to do, and it's going to be related to a to do list. We will store all of our to dos in there. So let's start. We can do create table and then specify the table's name. So it is going to be called to do. And then we can open brackets, expand them, make sure to close it with a semicolon. And here we can specify our columns. So the first column is going to be an ID. I want that each to do will have its own ID. So I can do serial primary key. And this is a function. You can sort of call it a function, which is related for generating IDs for each to do. So whenever I create a new to do, the new to do will get its own ID without me having to deliberately specify it. The second one is title. And as you can see on the left, I am specifying the columns name. And on the right, I am specifying the data type. So I can do title and the data type, which is going to be related to title is going to be text. And then the third column is going to be description and also text. I don't have to close it with a comma actually, I can leave it as is like this. And now we are ready to execute the query. And as you can see, our table has been created. Now we can do just for trying select all. And this symbol represents all. It means that we want to get all the data from our table. We can do select all from to do. And as you can see, this is our table, but currently we have nothing inside of our table. So we are going to insert data into our table. In order to insert data into our table, we should type this insert into and then specify the table's name, which is to do. Here we can open brackets and specify the columns. So as I said before, we don't have to specify an ID. This line is responsible for auto generating IDs without me having to specify it. So now we can just specify that we want to insert data into title and then also into description. And then we can specify our values. I can do like this my first to do and on the second one my third description and then close it with a comma and this is quite simple all what we have here is our to do which is our tables name and here the columns we want to insert data into and then the data which we are inserting so now we can execute this query and as you can see we got message which tells us that our data has been successfully inserted. So now we can do select all from to do and take a look at our data. And as you can see, here is our newly created data. Let's try to insert our second to do. My second description as well. And let's try to execute it. Now we can do select again. And as you can see, we got our second to do. And again, we didn't even have to deliberately specify an ID. This specific line took care of it. Okay, let's say that now I am looking to update my to do. So here I am going to update my first to do and modify it. We can do update and then specify the table's name and then set and we can choose a column let's say i want to update the title column here i can do set title to modify to do where id is equivalent to one so we specify that we want to get this title and change it from my first to do to modified to do and we do it based of id number one so that our script will know to choose this. This column, which is related to ID number one. And here we just specify the table 
where we want to update. Okay. Let's do select all from to do. And as you can see, our exchange has been successfully made. Okay, so as you can see, we have a new table here, which has much more data. So I've managed to insert more data into our to-do table. And now we will see how can we remove a specific column. So let's say that I want to remove ID number six from our table. So I am looking to remove this column, which has ID number six. So I can do delete from to-do and then specify where ID is equivalent to number six and it is going to delete it. Now we can do select all from to do again. And as you can see, ID number six is not there anymore. Now we can do number seven. And as you can see, number seven is not there anymore. And let's see, let's say that we want to remove all the data. We can do delete from to do. Let's try to select all from our to do again. And as you can see, all the data has been removed. We have nothing here. Let's say that now our table has much more data. So as you can see, we have much more data inside of our table now. How can we get a specific one, a specific column? We can do select all from to do and specify where, and then specify by what column do we want to filter. So I can do select all from to do where ID is equivalent to eight. I can also filter based on other things such as title. So let's take a look at this again. I can do select all from to do where title is, for example, learn Python. So as you can see, we have all the options we can filter based off any column we want. Let's say that you want to filter your data uh, based off more than one column. Let's say that you want to select ID number 8 and ID number 10. You can do select all from to do where ID is equivalent to 8. And then you can use the OR operator here or ID is equivalent to number 10. And now when you execute it, it will give you the two columns based of the ID you specified. There are some cases where your table can have a lot of data and you want to limit the amount of rows you get. So let's say that I want to query some data from this table, but I am not looking to get all the 17 rows. I am only interested in getting five rows. So I can do limit five and it will give me only five rows from my table. I can do limit one and I will get only one row. Now let's talk about joints. Let's say that we have a table which is related to students and then a table which is related to class. I would love to know to what class each student went. By using joints, we can achieve this. So let's first create our class table. We can do create table class. And now open the brackets. We can do ID serial primary key, which is going to be our first column. And then we can do class name, which is going to be by the data type text. Now we can execute this. And we can now query select all from class. And as you can see, we have no data. So let's insert our first class, insert into class and specify the columns. So class name. And the values. Let's say that this is a computer science class. So I can do from science class. And we are ready to execute this. Let's do select all again, just to confirm that our data has been created. Select all from class. 
And as you can see, here we have our class. So now we are going to create our students table. So we can do create table students. Let's open the brackets. And the first column is of course going to be an ID. I want that each student will have its own ID. And the second one is going to be a name. So each student has its own name. And then the third one is going to be the interesting one, which is going to be our class type or class name. And this is going to be with the data type integer. And then we can specify that we want this class name to reference to the second class table. So we can do references and specify the table's name, the second table which we want to reference to which is class and then the column so i would love to specify the id column and soon you will see why let's try to execute this okay so now we managed to reference our class name column to the column which is there which is found within our class table so we have a correlation between the class name from our students table to the class ID and then we can attach each student to a specific class which can be found within the class table. I know that it might sound very confusing but don't worry so much. All what we have to specify here is the ID of the class we want our student to belong to from the class table. So let's say that I have a student which needs to belong to class number one which is computer science class so now i will insert everything here insert into students i can specify the student name and the class name and then i can specify the value so let's say that the name of the student is elon and elon belongs to the computer science class which can be found within the class table you see here. This class has ID number one, so I can specify one. Let's execute. Now let's try to do select all from class, not from class, sorry, from students. And as you can see, our data has been created. So let's make a comparison between the data from our class table. This is our data, computer science class as ID number one. And now let's take a look at our students table. Our students table class name as ID number one, which correlates to the class name here. So now, in order to see what class belongs to our student, we can do this, select all from student, and then specify an inner join, which means that we want to join this class. Inner join class, we specify the table name, and then we can use on student.className equals class dot id now when we execute this query we can take a look at what class belongs to what student all at once okay so now let's say that we have a new table called metrics and i want to get only the latest results so let's say that I want to filter my data based on the created at column. First of all, I should specify that I want to get data for metrics. And then I can do order by created at and then descending order, which is going to give me the latest results first. So the latest results will appear first. If I want to get the first results, I can do ascending order 
sometimes as well I want to limit my rows and not get all the data so I want to get only the first five rows I can do limit file let's say that now I want to get only the latest five rows I can do limit file 